So you've got to know what it is you want. You better want it first. Again, you've got to have that burning desire. Okay, that's number one. You've got, but then you've got to know exactly what it is you want and why you want it. Now, if you don't, when if you just think you're going to do this, you know, one of the first questions I ask someone if they want to get into our coaching program is how committed they are. Because if they're just thinking about it or they hope they're going to do it, it's not going to happen. They have to they have to make a decision and want it. Given the current climate we're all living in, everyone has experienced this in the market. Uh, if you have any type of investments, whether they're in retirement accounts or just in taxable brokerage accounts that you've seen some peaks and valleys lately, or you've seen probably more dips than anything. Have a consistent message. What is your marketing strategy and who are you trying to reach? There, there's a thought that we should reach this wide encompassing net, try and get as many people out there. But the reason that's horrible is because you're not clear with anybody, so no one knows how they can help you. And ultimately, Really, if you think about it from an investment standpoint or as, a, as an agent, if someone came to you and said, I want to buy a house, well, you want to just go out there and find them a house. You would have a lot of other questions that help them to get to that specific type of house that you're looking for. You have to think now, have you reached out to your sellers with new marketing? Uh, if you're doing the marketing on your own, you have this as a great opportunity to adjust the language and send out your next batch of postcards to address things of COVID and how you're still buying. The biggest problem in, in real estate is overselling you know, for the sellers, for uh, us coming to real estate investors and people say we buy your house for cash. And then right now, a lot of people don't have the cash and don't have the funding because a lot of the funding's dried up. Then you want to define your structure. You want to understand uh, what you're going to say when you first come on. I always say, welcome back to the Creative Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Adam A. Adams. And uh, a lot of people think that uh, creative real estate just means lease options are subject to, but what it means to me is being able to do whatever it takes to find and create that deal. One deal. These are deals right in our backyard, right here in New Jersey that we did can absolutely change your entire life, right? I mean, you cash a check like this size, I'm pretty sure if you throw this amount of money at most of your problems, credit card bills, student loan debt, any of that, it's going to absorb or make a huge dent in that. So that's why we like this. Uh, business and in particular why I like wholesaling in terms of dollars per hour the amount of work that you put in for the amount of profits that you're able to make the next tool is again um, I think absolutely critical for any business owner it's to have a customer relationship model or in other words CRM uh, there are tons and tons of different CRMs uh, and there are even some that are specifically targeted for uh, various industries. When you're going into a project, it's important that you understand what's allowable there. And if it's a cosmetic rehab and you're going in and you're just doing that lipstick type stuff or a kitchen and a bath, it's not as critical that you understand this, uh, but it's important as you scale your business and as you start taking on higher quality, bigger types of rehabs. Like us, for example, when we're going in and we're doing these big add levels or these tear down and new construction builds, it's critical that we understand where is this property, uh, what zone is it in, and then what's allowable in that specific zone. For buyers, um, you know, just be cautious. Uh, you know, you really want to stick to, if you're doing like a buy to fix to sell, you really, your end buyer should be a, an FHA buyer. That's really what lenders are looking for. We're looking for an exit strategy where you're going to be selling the house to an FHA buyer. And what are the top three things that you can implement in your business that you can do as soon as you get out of this you know the summit okay and so keep it simple yet effective and works okay my answer personally is that there's four major things you have to do and the first one is having a lead magnet the first one is creating your funnel having a lead magnet having email follow-up sequence that's the most essential piece it doesn't matter what type of business that you have you have to have some type of lead magnet once you understand who your avatar is you got to create something for them